I'm Sun Leong. I'm a mixed indigenous cartoonist, writer, author. Um, I've dabbled in cartoons as well, done storyboards. Um, I would say my work is focused on a lot of science fiction, though I just recently um, did a slice of life book um, called A Map to the Sun, right there, um, which is my newest book, came out like last week, and um, is about five girls that are forced to join their school's basketball team. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like my work is pretty niche. I'm really into delving into the specifics of like my cultural heritage um, and the stories within that sphere. So um, on like my mom's side, I'm Mexican, Native American. On my dad's side, I'm Chinese, Hawaiian. Um, and there's just a, lot, a rich cultural history there that um, I just feel isn't explored like broadly, but especially within comics. Um, so those are big inspirations for me. Uh, with Prism Stalker over here, that's a psychedelic sci-fi adventure story. Um, I'm working on the second volume right now, um, and it deals with themes of um, colonization, um, imperialism, um, and is really meant to explore like being impl implicit in, or I'm sorry, complicit in um, power structures and institutions that you really are forced to be a part of, um, and the sticky, complicated, tangled nature of living in a world where you're where you have to be involved with those things, um, of course. And this has like the sheen of a very like adventure, like shonen manga style um, uh, comic. So there's a lot of fun bits, there's psychic martial arts, um, but there's also a lot of very like contemplative um, broody scenes <laughs> with this character dealing with um, just like what she's being forced to um, carry both like in her heritage and how she's expected to enact her will on this new world that she's being forced to help colonize. Um, so yeah, those are my two main works right now. I came to comics pretty late, like compared to most cartoonists I know. Um, I started reading comics when I was around, around like 12 or 13. Um, but like my origin story there with like storytelling um, was like when I was in third grade and um, my English teacher, well, she was just a general teacher or whatever, but uh, we would get weekly vocabulary lists. And I got really bored of just like repetitively writing those out for the week. We'd have to write each word like 30 times or it'd be like 20 or 30 words. Um, and so I asked her, I was like, instead of just like listing these over and over again, can I um, make a story involving like using this whole list? So every week I would write a new story using the vocabulary list. So by the end of the year, I had a lot of stories <laughs> and I would illustrate them too. <laughs> um, so I've always had this like, I've always had this draw towards like the like prose and illustration. Um, and then when I finally started um, reading comics and realizing like, oh, this is a thing that people can do that people do for work. Um, that's when I really started pursuing um, comics as like my main medium for storytelling. Um, but yeah, but prose has also always been um, kind of in the background, but within the last couple of years, I've been trying to um, really hone my writing skills just because like comics is extremely time consuming and I have a lot of stories that I want to tell. <laughs> um, and I'm experimenting with like writing and having another artist draw, which is fun, but also feels like, not that it's like, uh, I mean, they, the artists will always have more work in that relationship. Um, so I'm always kind of like antsy about collaborating that way. Um, but I've been enjoying writing like short fiction stories. Um, I got into Clarion West for this year, which is being deferred, which is like a science fiction fantasy writer's workshop um, that I've been vying to go to for many years. Um, so I'm going to be able to go next year. Um, and I've been working on a, a sci-fi like book manuscript, which is like 75, 80% done. Um, so I'm really excited about that and yeah, just branching into the prose, prose world just because it's a lot quicker than comics. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm very like project driven. 
Um, I don't have like a five year plan per se. <laughs> I'm kind of one of those people that will, will just be like, oh, I need to work a little bit more to make rent this month. So I'm going to take on like more illustration jobs, storyboard job, like whatever I need to do. I don't have a very like, um, not like romantic notion of work, but it's just like, I'll do what needs to be done. <laughs> um, and I, I think I also like, am feel like an instability. Like I've always felt a certain like instability with regards to the future. So I'm kind of like a day-to-day -day type person. Like I do have like creative projects I want to get to. Um, but I also don't want to like get bogged down with like, like freezing up in the decision-making product. A uh, process which happens sometimes when I'm thinking too much about like the future like things I want to do um but yeah I uh, like my short-term goals or like pursuits right now is just to write more short fiction write some books um I have a couple comics that I sold um last month so I'll be working on those for like a couple years. <laughs> so th those are my plans right now. Yeah. So I, I grew up in Hawaii and there's like no comics or like relevant art scene for me there. Um, there's no comic shop. So my like career basically got started using social media. Like I, in the really early days, I had like a DeviantArt, I had Twitter, then I had Tumblr. Um, and that's how I started getting work was basically just like cultivating a, not like friends, but I would follow like editors or publishers or other published cartoonists. Um, so it's always been a very core part of how I've um, made my career. But um, I feel like maybe within the past five years, it's very like people's personas and like their work work persona and like their real life persona have like merged into one and I find that very difficult to grapple with um as an artist especially because I not that I I, I don't want to like influence my audience but to me the audience like a reader and my comic they're going to have their own relationship together without me um so but I feel like right now a lot of readers like they want to hear the creators talk about their work, they want to engage with them, and that becomes like part of the relationship with the book is their relationship with the author as well through social media, um, which I'm not like crazy about. <laughs> um, like if we do like have an interaction with like, if I have an interaction with a reader, like I hope they don't like always take that in like, I don't know, like incorporate that into their impressions with my art because they can, I don't know the art comes from such a different place like it's it's not always like a straight like message that I'm trying to send through an art like a lot of my stories are me trying to explore something and I may not always have an answer to that and it may not always be an answer that I believe is right per se um I'm not trying to like teach people through my work <laughs> um and I feel like especially right now there's an atmosphere with um, towards creators where people want the work they could consume to be a little bit like didactic like and have like the morals of the story be very stark very black and white um, which I find like not a great atmosphere to be in <laughs> I feel like it flattens the work it like loses depth and nuance um, and not that I don't understand that like urge to want to have like clear and like morally um parsable stories but to me that's not where like the rich art comes from like it comes from being messy and complex and human and maybe ugly and like beautiful um and when readers kind of impose that on I mean and especially through social media I feel like basically everyone has access to you, like either through there or through email, like they're going to reach out to you and be like, well, why did you do this? Like I got emails about like a map to the sun. Like there was a scene where the girls are smoking. They're like teenagers. 
um, and they're like trying cigarettes for the first time, which I feel like almost everyone has done that. And they were like, I don't like that you didn't portray that this was a bad thing that they did. And I was just like, that's what you got from like the book. <laughs> like, it's just so strange to me. Um, and yeah, so it's been, it's been interesting seeing how creators have to, like, I personally have to kind of wall myself off from my social media as just, I used to like talk a lot on there and talk with people, but, um, it can get uncomfortable because people are like, oh, we're friends. We're like buddies. And then they'll like kind of like overstep boundaries, which is like, I understand why that happens. Um, but it's, yeah, it can be very like, um, uncomfortable <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the boundaries of like work, personal, artist, uh, fan, like those get all tangled up and it becomes very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like obviously like 2020 is, it's, it feels like an emotional peak for so many people. And I think it's because a lot of it also, I think a lot of it is because of social media in the sense that we are very hyper aware of like things going on globally. Um, and even like the smallest like crime or, or like a murder that may, or like an indigenous um, person getting killed, like something that no one would really ever hear about suddenly that's being put to the forefront um, uh, and repetitively in our, in how, in our social media feeds. Um, but it's also like not new. I feel, I don't know, I have like a semi-cynical, semi-hopeful relationship with how people respond to things. Like, I know there's that code switch um, article, like kind of at the beginning of the year, and they were like polling people, like, why now do you feel like you suddenly care about Black lives? And a lot of it was just like, well, I didn't want to, like some people were genu genuinely moved. Um, some people like were like, well, I don't want to be like, like left out or appear that I don't care. And then some people uh, were, yeah, again, it was just kind of like a peer pressure thing, not like dominantly, but that was very present. Um, but what was interesting was like very, like very few people were moved to action because, because they knew someone who was black. <laughs> so, um, which is like kind of disheartening um, that we, I mean, I, and I think that's, I don't know. I feel like that's just like echoes of like segregation in our history, basically. Um, and so while I do like appreciate how people are trying to make an active stand right now, it's also hard because I feel like people's attention is very like um, not, not reliable, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> um, but how this has affected my art, um, I don't know. I mean, I started working on my book manuscript as a way to kind of escape a little bit. So I started that back in March. Um, and I just want to do something really indulgent, something, it's like a sci-fi romance. <laughs> so just something that was like very fun to get like lost in, like, uh, strip, like making up like romantic, um, dynamics and conflicts like that sort of thing um but I don't know I feel like also because I'm adjacent to like political cartooning in comics uh like I I feel like I'm constantly thinking about like if art really does make a huge difference and I think it can but not on like a massive scale like I think I think it can definitely make like splashes and ripples um but like I also can't like we as artists we can't control how people perceive our work and yeah it's like it's hard I feel like I don't know it's it hasn't changed a lot for me but who knows like maybe we'll see how long people's attention like holds itself on these like issues that matter I guess and what kind of art I guess comes from that 
um, I don't know. Um, I brought up my cultural heritage um, that I feel is totally like under, uh, not underrated, but like undersung, especially in like science fiction, which is like kind of my, the main genre I am interested in. Um, to me, it's just such an like the aspects of like Hawaiian culture or like Native American culture um, tie in so neatly with um, science fiction. Um, I was in a conversation with a couple other indigenous creators recently and I was just talking about how like um, a lot of our beliefs are couched in that like the earth is like a living being um, and most people will be like oh that's just like mystical like you know s silly spiritualism um, but when you can put it in science fiction and add like a sci-fi bent to it people are like yeah like they're so into it they buy into it um, and I find that really interesting uh, to be able to frame a lot of like indigenous beliefs and um, traditions and perspectives within science fiction. I find it kind of breaks down this like initial barrier that people have. Um, but yeah, there's so many, I mean, my, so much of my culture is so like influential on me, like, especially when like I'm building stories or characters, like thinking about like this for example like the spiritual aspects of like my life and heritage like what would it be like in a future where people did not fear death um because they believed in like an actual afterlife and not that they were like uh believed in Im immortality but that it was a natural process like what kind of world would that build just this this specific belief and being able to like speculate on an entire culture that embraced that or um you know, gen gender roles is very, is like explored very um, broadly in um, science fiction, which is interesting. Um, uh, that's another like fascinating aspect um, that I find um, pretty complex. And also like um, concepts like uh, progress. I feel like a lot of science fiction is all about progress and like, getting away from like tradition or like moving on from it but what about a culture that is like really doesn't care about progress <laughs> like or like i should say progress in air quotes because it's like a very imperialistic concept itself like there's a lot of cultures that are you know that they prefer to live tied to the land with very minimal technology and um being able to explore that as just as valid as like any other like high tech you know culture or whatever um so yeah those are some influences there and then like with with like a map to the sun which is more um it's contemporary slice of life there's no like speculative element to it um the five characters the main cast are all mixed girls um and that is something i think about a lot too um uh like we were talking about like representation and to me like my mixed heritage informs everything else so like my Chinese side uh informs my Hawaiian side you know those things intersect they're not perfectly like compartmentalized um and I wanted to kind of explore that um not super overtly in a map to the sun because there's that's another aspect is like not all of our culture is constantly like at the forefront of every single thing we do like it's kind of like subtly interwoven in how we live our life and how we act um so those are yeah those are big aspects that come into play for me when i'm making stories and characters <laughs>